Hi, it's Richard from Original Outdoors. This is another video in our short tutorial series about the basics of axe craft. In the first video in this series, I cut down a tree using this axe. And then in the second video, I cut the branches off it in a process called snedding or limbing. So this is the next logical step in that process, which is taking that delimbed trunk and cutting it to a more usable length. So this is the same tree down here that I cut down in the previous videos and worked with. It was growing just over there, but we've changed location because there's a bit more light here. So I have to drag the bloody thing out to here. So I've decided I want to make my cut here. So I come with my toes right up against the log and I lean forward slightly with the center of my body right over that mark. So doing both of those things, bringing my feet up against the log and leaning forward slightly makes things a little bit safer because it means with my arms at full stretch like that, it's actually quite difficult to get the ax to skip over the log. I have to lean back slightly to make it skip over the log and hit my ankles. So as long as I maintain that body position and pay attention to what I'm doing, then I should be safe. So that's body position taken care of. Now you need to think about technique. What we want to achieve is a nice wide angled V like that, not a narrow V. You want something that's wide enough to get the ax into and to repeatedly swing into. It's going to remove quite a lot of material, but it'll do it quite efficiently, quite quickly. You need to have a sharp cutting tool. You need to resharpen your ax if you've just felled a tree. It needs to be as sharp as you can get it. And you need to focus on technique rather than strength. You need to focus on accuracy and repetition and just letting the ax do its work, but hitting the same marks every single time rather than trying to swing as hard as you can and try and blow through the log in one swing. You need to do it in smaller chunks and do it repeatedly, dang, 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 dang. And you work your way down through it. Like all of these jobs, it takes however long it takes and you can't rush this process. So time for the first swing. First one. Second one. So I've stopped there because, well, I've only got about an inch left of the tree there to go through. I wanted to show you this extra thing that you can add in. And this is something you could have done right from the very start, but I wanted to show you both versions and then as grown adults, you can make your own choice. And this is a safety log. You can find these in any woodland, but this goes there. This goes on the human side of the tree that you're going to be cutting through or booking through. And the idea with this is that you still put your feet right up against it and you still stand with a wide leg, but it means that there's a bit more material between the ax and where you're standing. And ideally, this is slightly thicker than the piece you're cutting through. That's not always gonna be possible, but you know, it's, if you can find a thicker one, then go for that one. This means then that when I cut through this, this ax is just gonna get buried in the safety log and that if I do miss, it's gonna hit that before it hits my leg. So let's finish the log off. I hate Western hemlock spruce because it always really, it's really grabby and bites on the ax. If this had been a lovely piece of ash or birch or something like that, I'd have just gone straight through it. There we go. I have a log. I have a length of usable timber, nice clean cut. 
you can see where the last cut just splintered through. It's taken off the cambium layer and the bark. Again, the reason I hate Western hemlock spruce. If I wanted to avoid that, I could have stopped and approached the log from the other side and cut through from that side. But for what I want this for, that bit of break out there doesn't really matter. Right, that was a technique with a longer axe. I'm gonna show you how to do it with a shorter axe now. So I performed all of that with a longish handled felling axe like this, but I'm more likely to carry something like this on a trip because they're smaller, they're a little bit more versatile, they're better for chopping wood, and uh, they're a better all-round axe than just a felling axe on its own. They're also slightly easier to carry. And if I was carrying an axe like that with a shorter handle, then I would need to modify my technique. I couldn't stand and chop at ground level like I was before, or at least not with out leaning forward really uncomfortably. So I need to change my techniques a little bit. And something I'll do quite often is kneel. It's not always possible. There might be another tree in the way, the ground might be too wet, or there might be snow on the ground. And if you kneel, you just disappear. But where you can, if you kneel, it's actually quite a safe way to do this. It's the same technique. You're just cutting from the top rather than cutting from the side. But to demonstrate it, I need to get rid of the rest of these axes. So uh, let's do that now. That was easy. So, got a trekking axe, the 900 gram Halter Falls trekking axe. And at that kind of angle, at that kind of reach, I can hit the log, but if I miss, it's gonna hit the ground. So hitting the ground isn't great for the sharpness of the blade and the blade edge, but it's a perfectly safe way to place your axe. So if you wanna find out more about that, then watch this video on the basics of axe safety. So, time to cut. Same angle I was using before, coming in at a shallow angle to make a really wide V. So I'm just gonna work my way through that. I think you should watch some slow-mo. So again, that's it. Log has been cut through. It's been cut through with two slightly different techniques. No extra blood, no loss of limbs, and everything was done quite safely. If I was using this to, know, to get a perfect piece of timber, then I wouldn't be happy with that breakout. But to avoid that, I could have got to halfway through and then rolled the log over and attacked it from the other side. And then I would have ended up with a pointy log but it would have not had this breakout and this splinteriness at the end under the bark so that's it for this part of the video series in the next one i'm going to show you some techniques for shaping this but we won't just use this tree for that video we'll use a couple of different species to show some of the the more intricate techniques and some of the things you might want to look at. If you like what we do, then like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I promise I'll put more videos on there. We've got more reviews, more tutorials, other videos out there on the channel, so you can go and watch those. You can go and look at originaloutdoors.co.uk and see what we've got there, or you can just go on about your life. Whatever you do next, thank you for watching this video. Thank you for watching this far into this video, and I'll see you again next time. It's raining. <laughs>